Hey, it's Rachel Cook, your modern mentor. And today we are going to talk about how to step into a leadership role without stepping in, well, you know, something else. Because that balance between delivering wins and connecting with your team, it can be really hard to strike. So whether you're considering taking on a leadership role, you're new to one, or you're already leading a team, but you could use some pointers, well, this episode is for you. My first foray into people leadership was a long time ago, and in hindsight, it was really early in my career. But the hubris of the young totally fueled me. My confidence was high. My capability was high. My expectations of myself and my team, you see where this is going. They were high. And my early success? Here's the plot twist, because that was low. I literally still cringe when I think about that time in my life and more specifically of that version of me during that time in my life. But failure, as they say, is our greatest teacher. And maybe they just say that to make us feel better about our fails, but still, it kind of rings true. I've come to understand so much more about what great leadership is. So much so that it's the foundation of my business, which is all about informing, equipping, and empowering leaders to do great things with their teams. Thinking about leadership the responsibility of it can be really overwhelming. There are countless books and courses and programs out there all wanting to teach you something new. But today, we're just going to focus on building the foundation, on the things I believe you should focus on in your first 6 to 12 months of being a leader. Get these right, and you'll earn the grace to figure out the rest in due time. It starts with a shift in your mindset. So you know how you were crushing whatever job you were doing and it was that very crushing that got you promoted or hired into this leadership role? So here's the kicker. Now as a leader, it's time for you to lean away from that doing and crushing because how you add value is different. Great leadership isn't about what you can deliver, but rather what you can empower your team to deliver. Your job now is to make sure people around you have clear expectations and they have tools and resources, and you're able to help them remove obstacles and manage their time and priorities. This is a huge mindset shift. You have to truly understand and believe this. Your value may become less tangible, but its impact will be bigger and broader if you stick the landing. Next, dial up your self-awareness. Okay, so you landed your mindset. You get that your job is now about empowering your team to do great things which means you need them to be candid with you about what they need and where they have questions or concerns. You need them to seek and accept your feedback and your coaching. All of this means you need to have some self-awareness, a sense of how your team experiences you. How do you communicate? How do you show up under pressure? What are your default settings? This is self-awareness. And only with this self-awareness can you begin to tweak and shift your style when you're talking to a team member who maybe is more sensitive, or more data-driven, or more introverted. So how do you gain this awareness? Well, you can ask around, talk to colleagues, friends, and even your leader, and find out how they describe you. Or you can use an online tool or assessment. There are plenty out there. You've got Myers-Briggs, Hogan, Social Styles, just to name a few. But invest a little time and thought into how you tend to show up. And then choose places or moments in which you want to start flexing your style to suit the situation at hand. Next, just listen. I still remember the smartest leader I ever had. I remember it so clearly because he told me no fewer than three times a week just how smart he was. I mean, okay, not literally, but close enough. See, he was new to the company, and I'd been there five years. But he had absolutely zero interest in anything I had to say. Whether I was offering a piece of advice on how to navigate our very political organization, or I had an idea I wanted to bring to our client group, hard no. He always, always knew better. When he joined the company, he had four direct reports. Within six months, three, including myself, had left the company. There is nothing more disempowering than working for a leader with no time for or interest in your ideas. Now, you may not be new to your company or even your team, but I promise you somebody, probably various somebodies on your team, has an idea worth listening to. One of the wisest leaders I ever had, like actually wise, 
once told me, hey, Rachel, your job is to bring the best ideas to life and you don't get extra points if they were your ideas. So listen to the people around you because there is a pearl in that pool somewhere. When you're a new leader, listen to your team, their ideas, their needs, their questions. You'll both learn with them and you'll find ways to support them. Next, find a way to be of service. My friend's daughter works in a local bookstore. She mentioned the other day that their credit card reader was off. Every third or fourth transaction would fail and she'd have to run the card again. Especially when the store was crowded, it got a little stressful for her. I asked if she'd mentioned it to her boss and she was like, uh, no, I would never bother her with something like that. It's not a big deal. It's just annoying. And she's right. It isn't a big deal and it is annoying, but also wouldn't it just be sweet if it got fixed? These are the types of things that team members are hesitant to mention to their leaders. No one wants to seem like a complainer, but these irky things really add up. They create annoyance and they waste time and eventually they may come to impact a customer, but you won't hear about these things unless you ask specifically. Try asking, hey, tell me one small thing that makes your day a little grumpier that I might be able to fix. Hear it and fix it. Trust me, you will be a superhero forever. It's such a great way to win some trust and credibility with your team who absolutely will want to repay the favor. And finally, define a path together. Take all that wisdom you've collected and the trust that you've garnered and build a plan together with your team. You don't have to go it alone. This is why you're building a team. So when it comes time to set goals and build plans, include your team in that process. Make it collaborative so that everyone has contributed and feels invested in its success. Okay, new leader, there are your five spots to focus on. I can't wait to see what you and your team deliver. I hope you'll join me next week for another great episode. Until then, visit my website at leadabovenoise.com if your organization is looking for partnership in retaining, engaging, or developing talent. You can follow Modern Mentor on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow me on the Modern Mentor podcast page on LinkedIn. Thank you so much for listening and have a successful week. Modern Mentor is a quick and dirty tips podcast. It's audio engineered by Dan Firebend with script editing by Adam Cecil. Our podcast and advertising operations specialist is Morgan Christensen. Our digital operations specialist is Holly Hutchings. Our marketing and publicity assistant is Davina Tomlin. And our intern is Brendan Peacock.